Hey there, aviation enthusiasts. Today, we're going to take a thrilling journey into the world of naval flight deck operations from the cockpit of a twin-engine supersonic fighter jet, the F-A-18 Hornet. The F-A-18 Hornet is a versatile and powerful aircraft designed to excel in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat. It's a twin-engine, all-weather fighter, capable of performing a variety of missions, including air superiority, strike, fighter escort, and reconnaissance. Now, let's dive into the action and experience the excitement of a naval flight deck operation from the cockpit of this incredible fighter jet. The deck of a United States Navy aircraft carrier is among the most dynamic and dangerous work environments on Earth. From the perspective of an F-A-18 pilot, it is also a place of exceptional precision, high stakes, and a tightly choreographed ballet of humans and machines. The launch and recovery of aircraft aboard a carrier often in rough seas and low visibility, demand a seamless integration of personnel, equipment, and experience. Observing Navy flight deck operations from the cockpit of an F-A-18 reveals an extraordinary example of teamwork and trust under pressure. The flight deck environment. Before delving into operations from the pilot's perspective, it's important to understand the setting. The flight deck of a Nimitz or Ford-class carrier is a relatively small steel surface, about 100 feet long and 250 feet wide, crammed with aircraft, equipment, and personnel. Every person on the deck wears color-coded jerseys indicating their role. Yellow for aircraft directors, purple for fuel handlers, red for ordnance crews, blue for plane handlers, brown for plane captains, green for catapult or resting gear crew, and white for safety and medical personnel. To a pilot inside the cockpit of an F-A-18 Super Hornet, this controlled chaos is viewed through a bubble canopy where every cue, signal, and movement must be interpreted correctly, often within seconds. Pre-flight and startup. The pilot's involvement in flight deck operations begins well before engine start. Briefings aboard the carrier determine the mission, profile, route, refueling, and ordnance needs. Once topside on, the flight deck, the pilot performs a pre-flight inspection alongside the assigned plane captain, brown shirt, checking the aircraft for visible damage, fluid leaks, or foreign objects. The FA-18's onboard diagnostic systems aid in identifying faults, but the human element remains critical. Once seated in the cockpit, the pilot runs through a detailed startup checklist. Communication with the plane captain and deck crew is, mostly visual at this stage, relying on hand signals. When clearances are given, the engines are brought to life, one at a time, producing the thunderous roar that characterizes modern jet operations. Taxi and catapult launch. With engines running, and systems green, the aircraft director, yellow shirt, takes over. Using hand gestures and wands, the director guides the F-A-18 through the narrow paths between parked aircraft and equipment toward the launch area. Every movement must be exact. From the cockpit, the pilot watches carefully, maintaining situational, 
Awareness and responding precisely to directions. Upon reaching the catapult track, the aircraft is aligned and connected to the shuttle via the launch bar. The holdback bar is also attached to keep the jet in place as it builds up power. At this point, the pilot performs final checks. Control surfaces, radar systems, navigation, and weapon systems. The launch officer or shooter, also in a yellow jersey, then kneels and gives a final thumbs up to signal readiness. With one last salute and a forward head nod, the pilot signals they are ready for launch. Throttles go to full afterburner, and in an instant, the catapult slams the FA-18, forward from zero to over 150 manamarnsh in under three seconds. The acceleration is brutal. The aircraft clears the deck with just feet to spare, climbing into the sky and leaving the deck behind, until it's time to return. Landing. The recovery phase. Recovery, or the trap, is arguably the most challenging phase of carrier aviation. Landing on a moving carrier deck that may be pitching in the sea is a task that requires supreme focus, constant corrections, and trust in the landing signal officers and arresting gear crew. As the FA-18 approaches the carrier, the pilot configures the aircraft for landing. Gear down, hook extended, flaps set, and tail hook armed. Unlike conventional runways, carrier landings involve a precise glide slope known as the meatball. A visual landing aid system, Fresnel Lens, that the pilot uses to align the aircraft's approach. From the cockpit, the deck looks impossibly small. The landing signal officers, stationed to the side of the landing area, monitors the approach with a trained eye and provides verbal corrections over the radio. The goal is to catch one of four arresting wires stretched across the deck with the tail hook. As the wheels slam into the deck, the tail hook snags a wire and the aircraft decelerates from over 140 knots to a complete stop in just two seconds. It's an intense jolt, throwing the pilot forward against the harness. Miss the wires, called a bolter, and the pilot must throttle back into full afterburner and go around for another attempt. Post landing and shutdown. Once safely aboard, the yellow shirts direct the pilot off the landing area. Blue shirts handle aircraft movement into designated spots and chocks and chains are applied. The engines are shut down following procedures and the pilot climbs out, handing over the aircraft to the maintenance crew for post-flight inspection. Despite the high technology environment, nearly every aspect of flight deck operations still depends heavily on human coordination. The pilot is one link in a long chain of actions that start well before the launch and continue long after landing. From the cockpit, the flight deck team's choreography is not just visible, it's essential. <laughs> 